Okay, this is going to be try to be a quick video. Uh, just going through some web scraping things because different websites load things differently. So you might come along some stumbling blocks if you watch previous videos. So let's go through, and I'm just going to work you through my thought process here. We are at the uh, Greater Naples Chamber of Commerce website, and uh, we have a, a list of businesses here. And let's say we want to get all those businesses' information into one file that's uh, somewhat formatted nicely. Um, so let's go ahead and open up our developers console. And uh, you can see that as I click on different sections here, it loads up different things. And you might think, oh, as I click on those, it's probably loading this information. So then you go through each one of these files that's loading. And uh, if you did, you can look through here, and I already have, and I can tell you right now, none of that information is in any of these files. So what I'm going to do is with the console open here, I am going to restart or reload uh, the website, which does take a little while to load. Why is it taking a little while to load? Well, there could be a number of reasons, but one of the reasons is that they are actually loading all of those business names and address, all that information, all at once when the page loads. And then when you click on those numbers, it's actually filtering through them. Um, and I think that might be one of the reasons that they are um, loading kind of slow, the page loads kind of slow. Now, I could do XHR and try to find that information, but I've kind of looked through here and I didn't really see what I was looking for. So if I'm trying to script this out, um, yeah, I'd want to do a little more research on this, but since I'm just going to pull them all at once, what I can do here is go back to all and make sure that everything is loaded. So if you didn't have the developer console open when you loaded the page, you want to open it, then click refresh, and that's this will list everything that's loaded on the page, all the pictures, all the scripts, all the HTML, and whatnot. What I can do right now is I can right click this and I can say save all as HAR with content. So I'll do that. I will save all as HAR with content. That's a HTTP archive record, something like that. Basically, what's going to do is it is going to create. I'm just going to call it output.har. It's going to create a JSON file. I can cat it out right here, and it's a JSON file. Let me go ahead and go into it with Vim. Um, that has everything that loaded on the page, every image, every XML file, every JSON file, all loaded. All the images are loaded as base64. If you loaded up uh, videos or um, audio files, those would, those would also be embedded in here in plain text, but as base64 that you can decode, um, with the exceptions of there's probably pages out there that use encryption. So now what I need to do is find what I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and take one of these so I can just look for this address maybe. So I'll just go to the top of the file. And I'll search for that, and there it is right there. And you can see that it's loaded up not in like a nice JSON format or a CSV or an XML, but it's actually loaded here as HTML, meaning that the server is serving up HTML, which some people like. I think it's a horrible way to do things, but that's the way it's being done, so we're just going to have to go with it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to grep for that address again. Whoops, I'm actually grepping a little bit more than... I want it there. There we go. From our output HRA. And that lists things. Now I'll say WC-L. So I'm piping that into WC-L and it tells me one. That means that uh, that's all on one line. So let's go ahead and dump that into a new file. I'm just going to call that file uh, temp or something. It doesn't matter. So again, I can go into here. I can go into this temp file and I can grab a different address. Let me go ahead and grab or different just words from that and I will search for that and I can see that that information is in there so it appears that the server is serving up some form of HTML all on one line for all the addresses I can assume that at this point we can find out by uh, doing more so now I'm just going to do some cleanup so we know that it's some HTML. So again, let's look in here and go to the top of the file. You can see that the JSON part of it tells us this is text, but we can see that it's an HTML document type. Uh, and what we can do, we could use grep and cut and all that to clean that up, but we can also use a text-based web browser. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cat out uh, that file, our temp file, and we're gonna pipe that into one of our options is W3M. I can do dash uh, dump. Let's see if that's enough. I might need to tell it that's a text HTML file. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and then we'll say capital T. Actually, let me do this. Okay, capital T. 
and I think just text forward slash HTML is all I need to type. And there we go, you can see it's now started formatting it in a somewhat readable fashion. We have a lot of these new line, these carriage return characters. Let's go ahead and remove those. So we will take that and we'll pipe that into, we'll say said forward slash forward slash D in here. And that means delete any lines that match. We're gonna say any lines that have this, but we also have to backslash the R and the N so that we know that they're not parts of special characters here. There we go, so we've cleaned it up a bit, and you can see, we can start seeing all our addresses here. So there you go, you have a readable format, but we might wanna clean it up a little bit more, so we'll play around with it a little bit more here. Um, so we can see here that we have, uh, you know, a business name, and then we have their address a few lines down, and then we have members since, and then we can see learn more, and that shows now a new business name, same information, then we have learn more. So what we can do is we can put everything on one line and then use this learn more line as a new line character. So let me let me show you what I mean. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that same command we just ran right here, make that a little bit bigger, and I'm going to pipe that into TR and I'll say new line. And what I'm going to do is say dash D. I'm deleting all new lines. Actually, instead of that, instead of new line uh, delete, we will say Let's create, let's put them as pipe characters because I'm going to make a file that divides everything up by pipes anyway. So we'll just get that going. So now everything is on one line with pipes. So all the businesses are on one line. Now we want to put each business on its own line. So what I can do is I can pipe that into said, and really I don't need to use TR. I could have used said and just ran a command there as well. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, let's substitute all lines that say, or all text that start off like this, learn more. I'm gonna say make that a new line character instead. So now I have each business on its own line and uh, with its information. We can clean that up a little bit more. Uh, some of them will say show on map. Not all of them do, I think. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, okay, let's find all this pipe visit site. And I will add to our said command. I will say substitute this. Oops. Uh, with nothing. So then that cleans that up a little bit and then I will do the same. Now if every line had the site visit and um, show on map, I could have done this all as one command, but I'm pretty sure some of them do and some of them don't. So now I'm just gonna say said and I will remove all this show on map. And now we've got a fairly clean, fairly clean, not perfect um, file that's divided by these new line characters. It's not perfectly formatted, but it's it's doable. So now I can just take all this, I can type this into an output dot CSV, and then I can just uh, xdg dash open, which is xdg is just gonna use on a Linux system that's running Xorg. It's gonna use whatever the default program is set for this file type. So I'm gonna open up this CSV file. So it opens up like this. And as you can see, I now have a spreadsheet and again, it's probably not perfect, but for the most part, I have, oh, but it is using commas. It should have asked me what characters I wanted to divide that up by. Um, but you're getting the general idea here. Uh, yeah, that was, let me use LibreOffice instead of GNumeric. So I'm going to discard that. And I'm just going to say LibreOffice, open that up. And there you go, LibreOffice will ask me what character I want. I'm gonna say, instead of commas, I'm gonna say other, and you just give it the pipe symbol since that's what I used in particular. Open that, there we go. Now we've got a better formatted. So we have, you know, the business names. We, we could have removed this web content. But you see some, some lines had that, some don't. So we could definitely have cleaned it up more in the shell, but for the most part, most of these are formatted fairly right contact information, contact person. I can scroll all the way down and you can see that I have over a thousand of these business names and contact information. Again, it still needs a little cleanup, but I thought that that would just give you an idea of my thought process of going through this. Again, you can clean it up more. Again, one of the things about this is they're passing us HTML and I hate when web servers do this. It'd be much better for us and them if they use something like JSON because then if they wanted to change the interface on their website, 
they can just still use that same output from the server and just modify the way the page looks and they can have multiple different formats and use that same JSON output in different sections of their website. But some people still insist on generating HTML on the server and pushing that out to you. And um, yeah, I don't like that. Some people do, I do not. Anyway, thanks for watching. Filmsbychris.com, that's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description and I hope that you have a great day.